In this video, we're going to examine the origin of liquid junction potentials. So first of all, a bit of background on liquid junctions. They are formed by either a salt bridge or a porous plug, and they allow the conduction of electricity between two solutions via the diffusion of ions, but they keep the two solutions separate and prevent them from actually mixing. Now, a uh, porous plug can also be referred to as a porous frit, and it's made from an inert material with an open morphology, so there are channels that will allow the diffusion of ions. Uh, one example is where you sinter alumina particles to form a, a frit with this open morphology. Okay, in order to think about the origin of a liquid junction potential then, we're going to consider the situation where we have a liquid junction between two solutions of HCl. So we've got aqueous chloride ions and hydrogen ions. And in solution one, there's a low concentration and in solution two, there's a high concentration. Now the ions are going to diffuse from high to low concentration. And they're going to diffuse at different rates. The hydrogen ions will move extremely quickly by jumping from one hydrogen ion to another. And we'll look at the mechanism of that in a moment. And the chloride ions will move very slowly because they have to push past the other molecules in the solution. So first of all, let's consider the fusion of hydrogen ions. So hydrogen ions don't exist just as a single proton in the solution. They actually exist as a hydronium ion as shown here. And let's consider now this being hydrogen bonded to some other water molecules in the solution. So the hydronium ion can move through the solution, not by having to physically move, but by just the electron density changing and basically the bonds moving around. So now this has gone from being a bond to a hydrogen bond and now we've got a covalent bond here so the hydronium ion has moved along and we can see that this mechanism can continue so that the positive charge is moving along but none of the atoms have actually had to physically move as I say it's just the electron density and, and a rearrangement of the bonds and so this can happen incredibly quickly and so hydrogen ions can diffuse incredibly quickly through solutions. This mechanism is referred to as the Grotthus uh, mechanism after the person who first proposed this. So in contrast, chloride ions diffuse very slowly and this is because they don't have a clever mechanism of jumping from molecule to molecule like the hydrogen ions can do. They're also quite a large ion. They have a hydration shell as well and so um, they have to push their way past all the other molecules in the solution. They have to actually physically move through the solution. So this makes the diffusion quite slow. So now when we think about our experiment here, where we've got solution S2 with a high concentration of HCl and solution S1 with a low concentration, what we'll find is that the hydrogen ions diffuse through very quickly, leaving the chloride ions behind. They're diffusing through slowly. And so solution S1 becomes slightly positive and solution S2 becomes slightly negative. So this separation of charge leads to a potential difference between the two solutions. The magnitude of this potential difference is given by the Nernst equation. And the particular form of Nernst equation is shown here. So we've got phi S1, the potential, the electrical potential in solution S1, minus phi S2, the electrical potential of solution S2, equals, and then in brackets, T subscript plus minus T subscript minus. Now these are the transport numbers for the cation and the anion multiplied by RT over F log of the ratio of the concentrations in the two solutions. So we've got 
concentration in S1 divided by concentration in S2. Now it's desirable to minimise the liquid junction potential for the reference electrode and so we can use an electrolyte for which the cation and anion have tra transport numbers that are very similar. And some examples include potassium chloride, potassium nitrate and ammonium nitrate. And if we use uh, one of these uh, electrolyte pairs, so this anion and anion, anion and cation combination, we get a negligible liquid junction potential, typically around one or two millivolts. And so uh, it's one of these that we would use in, in order to make our reference electrode and minimize that liquid junction potential. So I hope you found this useful. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications of future videos. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.